Okay, so uh, example two, this is 2.3 histograms, this is part two, so we'll pick it up at part two here. And on your sheets there, you should have an example two that starts off with Arabella. This is the one you have, right? You guys have this in front of you? Notes? Nice. So Arabella works as a server at a busy restaurant. She keeps track of the amount of money she receives in tips per table. Draw a histogram to represent the tips she received. What is more obvious from the histogram than in the table below? Okay, so we have two ways of reporting this, right? Uh, obviously, we have a table of values here. So we have amount of tip, which this looks like um, for each section, it's a bit of a range, right? So less than $2, $2 up to $4, and then from $4 up to 6 just before 6 and then from 6 to 8 and so on, 8 to 10 and so on, and over 10. So we have categories or areas. So what's the big thing about, what's a histogram? What, what did you learn yesterday? What, what's a histogram? What are the characteristics of a histogram? Uh, it's like a bar graph, but represents continuous data. Ah, very good. It's like a bar graph, and the but, bars are touching. but represents continuous data, and the bars are touching, just like, yes, this is called a histogram. So a bar graph would be like separate bars of things, like for, you know, favorite animal, right? Okay, how many people chose dog? How many people chose cat? They're, they're separate and unrelated, so they have separate, non-touching bars. That's a bar graph. But a histogram is another way of kind of, it's, it's like a uh, broken line graph, right? Like, you, you could draw uh, a histogram as a broken line graph. There's this level, then there's this one, and then there's this one, right? And they kind of move like this. So it's kind of continuous data. Um, but the thing about histograms is that this, this, uh, the categories are, they, they flow from one to the other, but they aren't necessarily related. So the area between, like, let me just show you, like this area in here, like this doesn't really mean anything. So a line graph connecting two sections, you know, it, this, the points in between don't really mean anything, right? Uh, it represents sizes of categories. So that's why, uh, broken line graph is maybe not as good as a histogram, but you can still see the flow of what's happening. Awesome. So back to example two here, where, where are we, example two. So Arabella works at a busy restaurant, she's tracking her tips, okay. Now let's do the histogram, and I've got it started here for you, so you have some space, a little bit of space in your, in your notes there. So we're going to do, we're gonna do it this way, we're gonna do tables on the vertical axis, and then we're gonna do sort of the tip money over here and I'm going to make a mark every two dollars so two four six eight ten and and then uh, that's that's where I'm gonna kind of stop so you, so go ahead and get that started here so number of tables and this is going to be tip um, tips okay so the dollars for tips all right so what am I gonna we need to figure out a scale for the vertical, and you guys will come across this. You guys have been doing graphs for a long time. So again, what I always encourage you is find the lowest number and the largest number, and make sure that the largest number is on there, and if the lowest number is near zero, then you can always just start at zero. So this is pretty close to zero, so we'll, all, we'll start at zero here. And then we gotta go up to at least 23. So we could go up to 25, maybe, right? Uh, or we could go up to 30, probably, I don't know. Let's see. Let's go by fives. And I don't have any lines in my paper, and you may not either. But let's try and go like 5, 10, 15, 20, and 25. Okay, so that's how I'm going to split this up. And, and uh, if you were, you know, being very exact with this, you could easily use a ruler and make little tick marks every half a centimeter or something. But, yeah, we're going to do something like this. Whoops. Okay, so we've got this, uh, this set up. Now, for a histogram, again, it's like a bar graph, but the amount, it, it always covers uh, sort of a, uh, a, a, an area, a, a region. So less than $2 is the number 12. So 12 times she got tips, or he, Arabella, she got tips, uh, less, than, less than $2. So that's this section between 0 and 2, right? And so we're going to go up to about 12. Right about here, we're going to make a straight line across and then draw a straight line above two. I'm gonna leave my, my histogram bars just blank for now. I'm gonna, not gonna fill them in because I don't get too messy. But So that's your first bar. Now this says that a, a 12 times, she got tips that are somewhere between zero and two. So somewhere in here. We don't know exactly how many $1 tips she got, 
We don't know exactly how many 50 cent tips she got, but we know that in that range, this is the number. Make sense? Okay. So the two to four dollar range is going to be six. So now I need to go down to six here, make a line. So this is five, so six would be just above five. Best you can. Oh goodness. Gotta make a straight line there. And again, if you can use your ruler for these lines, all the more, that's better. So obviously she made fewer tips um, between that two to four dollar range. Now if she was given an exactly two dollar tip, which category would that fall in? Would it fall in the first one or the second one? An exactly two dollar tip. In the second one, right? Because look at it starts at two dollars. A four dollar tip would not go in here, right? Four dollar tip would go in this section. Yeah, so again, it, it wouldn't be a good idea. It wouldn't be a good idea to put two to four dollars and then four to six dollars and then six to eight. It wouldn't be a good idea to do that because you've got four dollars in two sections. So where do you put that one? So that's why they go up to just three ninety nine. That makes sense? Or up to but not including four. Okay? All right, let's keep moving. We're, we're doing good. Ooh, 23. Okay, this is a lot. So most of the tips were between four and six dollars, eh? Four dollars to five ninety nine. So I need to go up to twenty three, which would be oh this is gonna be tough, but it's gonna be I'm gonna say right about here. Draw a line over. And then you'll have to draw vertical lines right here connecting this this uh, this part and this part on here. Everybody good there? Pretty easy, right? Pretty easy? Awesome. Okay, and we'll go to five. So the next category is exactly five. So straight over from five. And then four. So we'll go one less than five there, pretty close. And then over $10. So notice that we have a pretty large section here um, because that's, that's like $11, 12, 15, 20, 50, $100. Can you imagine getting a $100 tip if you were a waiter or a waitress? Ooh, that'd be great. But there's only two that were over $10. So it does not happen very often. So we can pr have a pretty large category if we don't have very many in there. So generally you want to keep sort of the bars pretty close together. So a pretty close to the same size. So we'll just go, and you can put a little 10 plus here. Yeah. Okay. Or if you don't put a number here, right, um, then that means just over 10, right? That's the category over 10. You could put like a, a infinity here if you want. <laughs> $10 up to infinity, I don't know. Uh, if you want to get fancy. So that's what they did in this previous uh, uh, question as well here. Just, just do plus. So that's what, that's what we'll do. Awesome. Okay, any questions about that so far? Okay, so let's answer this, this uh, connected question. What is more obvious from the histogram than from the table? What's, what's maybe way more obvious when looking at this histogram compared to looking at the table real quickly? Well, what jumps out to me is that, hey, we have one category that's super high here that's larger than anyone, any other one. And it's easy to even note the two most popular categories of tips, right? If you're looking at a series of numbers, you might spot a really large one. That, that's, that's probably only because many of them are single digit and there's only a couple two digit numbers. But if you, if you had a long list of numbers, right, versus uh, bars on a histogram, it would be pretty easy to see where the max and min numbers are. And here's the minimum one. And that would probably be easier to see as a picture than it would be just uh, examining all the numbers. So what might be more obvious for a lot of people would say is that the, the maximum minimum values really would be, um, you, you know, or I say the maximum uh, numbers for each category would be easy to see, comparable. Wait, any thoughts or questions on that? All right, let's move on then. Okay. Build your skills, okay. So build your skills. Let's do number one. You should have this in your notebook. An insurance company did a confidential survey of the ages of employees in the company to estimate how many would be retiring in the company years, coming years. The results are shown in the following table. Use the data to draw a histogram. All right, so we just did that. I'm gonna get this started for you and I'll ask you to finish it. So again, we need a vertical column and we need a horizontal column. 
Uh, we do need to separate this into, uh, into categories, okay? Now, should the categories be the exact same size? They, it's a good goal to have them the same size, c comparable. They don't have to be though. Like for example, this first bar is gonna be less than 25. So that's going to be the age of you know zero to 25. Now you're not gonna have too many employees that are zero or one or two years old, I get that. But the number of years doesn't have to be the exact same, 65 and older. That's a wide, wide range it could be. So they don't have to be exactly the same. It's good if each category is pretty close to being the same though. It's actually really good. So the first number we're going to put on the bottom would be what? Are we going to put age on the bottom or are we going to put the number uh, on, the, on the bottom? Age. Yeah, good job, age. So let's, let's, put, uh, let's put 25 here. Uh, we could put zero over here. I think that would be good. Less than 25. You can't be less than zero years old, I guess, um, and, and possibly be an employee anyways. So we're going to put 25 here, and then we're going to put, um, I guess we'll put, we're going to put 34. We're going to put 35. What do you guys think? 35. Um, I would say that the first number here in the category is what this should be, right? So this is 25. We put 25. 35. Let's put 35. That's a good idea. 45 would be our next. And you should space these out maybe uh, appropriately. So 45. And then 55. And then finally 65. And we will put a little plus there. Yes. Very good. Okay, I like it. I like it. Now, how? What should I put for a scale here? Should I go like zero to a hundred on the scale? Should I put a hundred up here? What do you think? No. no. Why not? Because uh, the number of people doesn't go up to hundred. It goes up to twenty-four. So we can do twenty-five and go up by fives. Awesome. Very good. We don't want to put a hundred here because the, the largest number we have is 24. So that means that all of these bars, look at all of these bars would be like super small if I went, like, and that doesn't really help us, does it? So we wanna try and make the bars as tall as possible in the space that we're given. So instead of 100, I think you're right, 25, and we should do it probably roughly the same as we did last time. So let me see if I can space this out here. One, two, three, four. So five, 10, 15, 20. And this is number of uh, people or employees. And this is age in years, okay? So it's a good idea to put what you're measuring, the quantity, like the, what, the, what the, uh, the, the thing is, in this case, it's age, and also put the units too, so years. Number of people, there's no units, just number, right? Um, I, I would actually like maybe better than number of people, number of employees, that, that gives us a little more detail here. So number of employees, I'll abbreviate that because of space. Okay, excellent, excellent. So now that we've got that started, why don't you take a few minutes and finish your histogram. I'll finish mine as well, and then we'll see if ours look similar, okay? So go ahead and take it from here. You do it, and let's see what ours compare. How's that? Does it look something like that? Yeah? Okay. Now, if you fill in the, the bars of the histogram, that's totally fine. Yeah, that's totally good. I, I appreciate it either way. Uh, so it's easy to see which is the, the, the smallest you know, category, the fewest number. Um, most of the employees here, it looks like, um, uh, so most of the em employees are between 55 and 65. So that means that they're going to have a lot of employees retiring over the next, you know, one to ten years, right? Like, uh, so this is good uh, data for the company. They know they have to start hiring some younger people. They have to work on that. If they, if this bar was the highest over here, and and you know they they are probably in pretty good shape that these cost, these employees hopefully will stay around a long time and they'll have a really strong workforce. Um, but anyways, that, so lots you can learn from. From data. Okay, so uh, go ahead and finish the rest of the work on the rest of the questions in your uh, notes package there, and then that'll be the end of uh, two point three. Uh -oh.